Hey everyone, Dave from Summer Racing, back with you. Another Facebook Friday Live video or Friday Facebook Live. Friday, I whichever. Say, man, it's, yeah. right, but it's only been a few months. I know. But... I like both, honestly. <laughs> we have Carrie with us. Carrie, how you doing? Hey everybody, I'm doing good. I'm really so. excited about this one. Actually, we are doing uh, some pinstriping um, and looking yes. at some of the tools required, doing a demo. Yep. Uh, just talking maybe a little history on pinstriping. Now, Carrie, you're and all things paint guy, all things hot rod guy. I know you guys have some exciting things going on in yeah. your own garage, but yes. paint is definitely uh, something that you're, you know, you've, you've spoken here on as an uh, yes. expert. And so just tell us a little bit about uh, how you got into the pinstriping uh, hobby, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it kind of started for me a little bit in high school. I, I was going around the car shows and stuff. I'd see pinstriping and I thought it was really cool. And I was like, man, that looks like it would be fun to try. So then I tried it and it was god awful at it. And then forward on to college and I picked it up again and tried doing it again. And, it, you know, I started getting a little better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And then I actually got, in my opinion, pretty good. Um, I mean, I by no means am I the greatest on the face of the earth, but, you know, I, I'm I'm good enough to be dangerous, we'll say. Yeah. So, yeah. well, it's an old school art form. I'm yeah. The hot rodding uh, facets and just, I, we were talking a little bit about that before. Some of the big names in it. Just yeah. Talk a little bit about that history. And yeah. So, I mean, the pinstraping started kind of in the 40 or late 40s, early 50s when, uh, well, I actually started back in like the 1800s with like wagons and that kind of stuff. Um, but it really became popular in the late 40s, early 50s in the hot rod industry because of a guy named von dutch i mean if you guys are in the pinstriping or in the old co classic cars hot rods and stuff you know the name von dutch he's been around forever i think he was like a clothing brand in the early 2000s um but he is he's what is known as like the father of all like modern hot rod pinstriping but guys like him dean jeffries um ed big daddy roth they're all kind of extremely famous for pinstriping or you know Roth is famous for rat fink and that kind of stuff. Uh, Dean Jeffries, he was flames and all yeah. kinds of cool, crazy paint jobs on cars. But Von Dutch is really the guy that started it all. And if you're interested at all in pinstriping, I suggest going and looking up his stuff because he is ridiculously good at it. And he's a fantastic pinstriper and read his story. The guy was like a crazy genius too and he i mean just some of the stuff he created and his artwork and stuff yep. you can kind of tell what he did and how kind of eccentric he was right yeah so it's definitely out there uh so you know you talked about you know your kind of foray into this and and i think you obviously you can't be necessarily shy you kind of got to jump in you got to yeah. own and, and learn from mistakes as you go along any any uh advice for somebody that's maybe thinking about you know yeah their toes into this yeah absolutely you know i got started doing it because my dad uh if you guys remember in our paint video he was that old guy standing next to me that looked like a, the other old guy yeah the, the other old guy the one that looks <laughs> a lot like me um but he had a pinstriping brush because he actually tried it back in like when he was a little kid and did it on a couple of my him and my grandpa's hot rods from the 50s and 60s i just dated him there um but uh you know i picked up one of i found one of his pinstriping brushes grabbed it and literally i mean you got paints any kind of paint will work i use like hot i use one shot enamel um just because it's oil based is easier but i think i started with like rust-oleum mm -hmm. a little pint can of mm -hmm. rust-oleum or whatever it was and uh i mean it works great you just dip the brush start making lines and you just keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it until you eventually get a line that you're happy with and you kind of go from there. It just it's just literally repetitive practice. Practice, yeah. I you know, somebody like me, we were talking earlier, a little little shaky, a little too yeah. much coffee. I mean, obviously some folks can be better than others, but can you overcome that a little bit, do you think? You know, a lot some guys will say no, but I mean I you know, I played football and stuff and I've broken my fingers and as age is kind of catching up with me a little bit it's uh I start getting a little shakier going up to it but then once I get on I'm pretty still but I mean if I'm if I'm having a bad day and my hands are hurting or something I'll 
you know, work the shake into it. So I can, you can kind of guide the brush with your shake. So it's doing a lot yeah. of the work for you. Gotcha. And I hope, hopefully I don't have to show you that today, but uh, if I do, you'll see it. So, well, I know, you know, one of the things that we're going to obviously talk about some of the, the tools that, you know, you might need and some of the, you know, paint options and you kind of touched on that already, but we're going to actually do some pinstriping here. And, yes, we are. Uh, I think one of the things we're going to do, we have a, summit creeper over here yes and you're going to pinstripe that and uh, put put your cool stamp on that and we're yep. going to give it away uh, simply by uh, anybody who likes or comments in any way to say hi even or ask yeah. a question on this uh, this live feed this post and uh, do that by we'll say four o'clock today and uh, we'll give away a you know what? Let's extend it out through the weekend. Let's just let, let that this, works. Let, so people can watch after. So yeah. by then, through the end of the weekend, uh, we'll go and we'll randomly draw a name and uh, send out a custom, a now custom that's right, some creepers, so. a McFly design one. So it'll be perfect. So <laughs> well, you've got some stuff you've already sort of yes, worked yes. on here too. So tell us what we've got. So I brought some stuff that I'm kind of gonna so I can kind of show different things. Like I do sign painting as well. I'm I really really enjoy sign painting actually. Because it, it's relaxing to me. It's like lettering and printing and stuff. It's 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 fun. Um, but I kind of brought a few things. So I brought a helmet I'm doing. Summit racing equipment. Uh, got the 68 on the back. Corvette on the side. But I'm going to finish this up. And I'm just kind of going to show you how to do outlines and stuff like that on this. Um, and then the show, more of a symmetrical type pinstripe. I brought an old Model A headlight that I have. I had it laying around in the garage this morning, and I was like, what can I stripe? Oh, that'll work. So we'll kind of stripe this up, see what it looks like, show you how to do different types of uh, stripe. And then we got a uh, radio here that we're going to do symmetrical as well, so it'll be nice and uniform and even, or at least as even as I can get it by yep. eyeballing it. And I'll show you a couple different techniques you can do kind of to guide yourself in the right direction on that. And then the creeper is kind of going to be crazy, yeah. you know, non-symmetrical because it's weird shape and the summits in the in an odd place on it. So it's going to be kind of cool to see how that turns out. Um, but yeah, so it should be out oh, in my my lacquer thinner bottle. So <laughs> that's what I use to keep my lacquer thinner in, so I can clean my brushes and stuff. But when you're a pinstriper, you, I mean, there's nothing you really can't pinstripe. Yeah. I mean, if, if paint will stick to it, I was, you can do it. I was just going to ask, I, you know, I'm sure you've had some unique uh, surfaces and yes. subjects you've pinstriped. Anything uh, way out there that comes to mind? Uh, my favorite one I ever did was I did a uh, toilet seat. So that was <laughs> it was awesome. It turned out really cool. But it, I mean, that was probably like one of my favorite ones I did. Um, you know, I've done a ton of cars, a ton of just random stuff. I know my dad and I, we, we have a big shop where we, you know, paint cars and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I uh, literally everything in our shop is either pinstriped or I, I, uh, we have extra paint left in the gun. So I'll go, I'll be like, Oh, this would look really good as a panel paint job and I'll panel stuff. And, you know, it, it's fun though, you know? Oh it, yeah. Yeah. Interior, exterior. I mean, I, like you say you have the, the shop with all kinds of yeah. you know, possibilities. I'm sure. Yeah. So um, so yeah, so what do you want to what do you want to start with? Here? Yeah, um, on the spot. Yeah, there we go. Well, I'll kind of show you some of my, the tools of the trade, some of the stuff that I like to use. Okay. Um, first, you start off with a magazine because this is one of the big things about this is loading your brush correctly. I use I'm, today. I'm using a DXE catalog because I forgot my other one. But uh, sorry, DXE. Sorry, Tim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but you want one with glossy pages because if it's if it's got non-glossy pages it, the the paint will actually soak into it so with glossy pages you can turn it over and use the next page one catalog will last you a, a year probably so so that's the first thing second thing obviously paint you can see these are new cans these guys right here this is old cans so you can see kind of the difference i already got paint on myself too you can kind of see the difference of the more they get used. And the cool thing is my dad complains about this all the time too. Um, he's like, you're just wasting money and stuff because I never put lids back on these because it's enamel. It's hard. So it dries yeah. solid, you know, and then 
as I stick my finger through it. Um, <laughs> this is going to be a really good video. I'm going to be covered That's in right. paint by the end of this. This is going to be an adventure. Yeah, right? exactly. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it has like a nice film covering on it. So mm -hmm. plus once you get it bad enough, your little never stick to it. Um, and the most important thing, can you still see me if I come over here? The most important thing is your brushes. So this is my brush box. It's just like an old ratchet case. So, and these are my brushes. It looks disgustingly dirty and filthy, but it's because there's it's oil used. in it. Yeah, yes. it's, it's well used, but there's, and I keep oil in it, just a regular motor oil. Actually, I think this is our summit brand. I had some left over from filling up my hot rod, but, uh, I use just regular motor oil. You can get, we make special, they make special brush oil and stuff for it. I mean, yeah, there's a difference, but you don't really have to have it. Um, the other thing, a Stabilo or like a grease pencil. We also carry these. Um, this is just so you can mark out, you know, you can draw on the stuff for if you, I'll show you a couple different techniques as well, where you can uh, draw out your design first or, you know, at least mark your guidelines and stuff. Do you have a preference for yourself? Are you a freehand guy? Uh, yeah, I never draw. My, another thing my dad always yells at me about, he's like, because, you know, he's a dad. So he's, of course, he gives me pointers and stuff all the time. And he's done it before. And he's just, he's gotten too shaky where he can't do it anymore. But he's like, man, you got to draw everything out. I'm like, I can't. Because then, it, you know, for some reason, I don't like drawing stuff out. A lot of, a lot of guys draw it out. If I'm doing a sign or something, like, uh, here it is. Like this guy, I started doing a sign. So this is actually, you know, I drew this out. So I have yep, yep. proportions and stuff, correct. But, uh, you know, when I'm doing like regular line striping and stuff, I usually don't draw it out. But, okay. But I'll show you how, Just I know how. let your mind take you to where you, where you want to go with it. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it, it, it either turns out really good or you right. just keep adding lines until you can't see the original <laughs> lines. So, so talk a little bit about the brushes that you use. I know there's different sizes. And, yeah, and exactly. What, what do you recommend, like, you know, for somebody that maybe just starting out, or is it depend on the? Uh, probably depends on the project. Dep exactly, yeah. it depends on the project. Um, honestly, the best thing to do if you want to start doing this kind of stuff, <clears throat> especially if you're going to be doing, you know, painting like rat banks or painting different things like dice on the back of cars or whatever. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do is get a Kafka. It's our lettering brush kit. And it actually comes with different sizes from zero to 10. Um, if you want to get a, you can show the brush box, sorry. Um, these ones, the, you'll see the brown ones here. These are all the Kafka ones. I got a couple extra ones too, but you can see they come in all different sizes going from zero to 10 and a lot of the popular sizes and stuff. And I got, you know, just some, bigger brushes so we can uh, fill in stuff a little bit quicker. Yeah. Um, but the main thing with pinstriping is you want your pinstriping brushes. I got a couple Kafka's in here, which I'm, I'm not going to use these today because what I'm doing, I'm not uh, doing what I need these for. But these are more for my lettering and stuff, doing outlines and everything. For today, I'm actually going to use a Mac brush. So this is my Mac brush. You can see when it uh, spreads out, you can see this, since it's got oil in it, I can play with it and show you this stuff. It, oh, see how much oil it's holding? So that's how much paint you can get in it. It's, it's all about loading and all that kind of stuff, which I'll show you how to do. Um, but yeah, and it comes to a nice pinpoint on so, the end and everything. You know, we talked about the sizes, zero through 10, as far as that factor the loading of the, the paint how is that is that directly related to those sizes or is it is it they make different one so you said lettering versus something else so how does that yeah make? so if say i'm doing uh did i bring you the letter no i didn't uh so say i'm doing lettering i'm doing a k right i'm going to use this one to fill it in because that's my bigger brush mm -hmm. so then i might use like a uh what's this one a six mm -hmm. to do an outline with it, you know? So that's kind of how that works. And the cool, the thing I like about the calf is, is the uh, end of the brush. It's kind of like a, it, it 
you, it can either be flat or a semi-rounded, which I really like because then you can put a nice flat edge on it and stuff, or you can round it off real nice as well. Okay. Yeah, I know we, we, we offer kits, like you mentioned, that have the mixing uh, cups and things like that. Yeah. Kafka. So we have all that stuff. Um, yeah. The, and if, you, if you're a starter, that's the best kit to get because it actually comes with a striping brush. It comes with um, a book of actual uh, – striping and stuff and then it, you can put it on top of a translucent piece of paper and you can actually follow the lines and it kind of teaches okay. you how to do the striping and how to cur or you know how to roll the brush and stuff okay and, so it's kind of like it's almost like kind of going to school there for a minute you know it's exactly. got a textbook and you get a little bit of practice so that's exactly. good for somebody like me to know because yeah it is not as gutsy to just jump in and, <laughs> so but yeah uh so what's what's what do you want to start with here um <laughs> All right. I guess we will start with ease your way in. Let's go with the helmet. Okay. Let me do this one first. All right. All right. Now Dave made me mess up my so my job is basically area here. not bunk the table. So exactly. Yeah. That's so my only job. I got one job. Let's I know. I, mess up. I put the, I put the locks on because I said earlier I was like <laughs> this is going to be horrible. I'm going to put my foot on the table and just gonna roll through the camera. Um. And so we're going to start off using my. Mac brush because this one I want to do some striping on. Um, and I have a can here, the half a can, which I'm be taking bets I'll cut myself on before this this video is over. I'm not taking over. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, I wash it off in lacquer thinner to get all the oil off. And then I just do a quick, just, you know, half hearted wipe on it because then it's still got oil in it and it leaves it a little bit more. Uh, usable in your hand so when you're rolling it and stuff to do curves it makes it a little bit nicer uh, right. what do we start with here Wait. so you already started this do you obviously you must have something in mind going into this to complete it, yes or? yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. so so yeah. <laughs> you, did all, you did all this work already so. yeah no i have no idea what i'm gonna do to it yet <laughs> i i well that's actually partially true i have no idea what i'm gonna do on this yet or no idea what it's gonna look like but i'm gonna start striping around the 68 and just kind of because it's the only real symmetrical part on it so i'll start off with a symmetrical stripe around here and then we're to summit i'll kind of get looser and just fill the whole try and fill the whole helmet with uh stripe so we're going to go with white and just dip your brush up to about the wrap here and then you put it on here and this is what loading the brush is. What you want to do is you want to get the fat part of the brush filled with some paint. So that way you can pull longer lines. You can use it longer and it'll actually, you know, it's, it's easier to uh, do because you don't have to stop as many times and it stays nice and solid and everything. So we'll pull a line. All right. So that works. So... Excuse me, Dan. Stand back. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start here. God, am I? I'm nervous. Should I be nervous for this? You've never done this before. <laughs> I haven't. No. <laughs> yeah. In all honesty, folks, this is my first time ever pinstriping. I've never done this. <laughs> so the other thing is too, you're gonna get about 800 different types of lines depending who stripes it just all depends on their type of striping or their um you know just what they do i i usually tend to do like a fatter line so i i like the fatter lines so and as you can see here <laughs> happy accident i there is no wrong way to do to do these striping and everything. So you can see this one's closer than that one. Easy fix. Come over here, kind of even that up. And then you just make another line. Like so. So you're kind of using your balancing yeah. techniques for that one. It works better for you. Yeah, so a lot of the guys, this is how I learned how to do it. A lot of guys use their pinky because it's easier to kind of roll your 
brush and everything on. Uh, give me a second. I'll show you. See, so even even though I screwed up, as Bob Ross would say, it's a happy accident because then you get two nice lines. Yep. And that was not staged. I actually did that really off. <laughs> um, trust me, as, as the video goes on, it'll get better. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's when I stripe, I usually go use my pinky. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll actually go like this and actually hold my wrist. Whoops. Hold my wrist and actually, you know, do it that way. Gotcha. So how much more of a challenge is something that's a rounded surface like this, or do you prefer that? No, I definitely do not prefer <laughs> this. Uh, and it's mobile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's, it moves on you as you're doing it. Um, I definitely do not prefer helmets, but they're they're fun to do, but they are challenging because you have a – very three-dimensional surface or 4D surface, I guess. Um, so they're a little bit more challenging, but it they turn out really cool. So as you can see here, it goes up to there, but then it gets shorter here. So we're just kind of going to start our randomness going around. And one thing I've learned throughout my years of doing this I pull lines better one way than the other. And I'll explain that here in a second. So this way, when I curve this way, it goes a lot better than curving that way. So I'll try and actually adjust the actual part or whatever I'm striping to make it easier on myself and make it actually work a little better. The good thing is with this, I got these center like yeah, but or like a guide the snap yeah. so I can tell where the center of the helmet is. So with this I'm actually gonna be doing some different styles uh, or thicknesses. So you can see those are thicker. This one I'll do a little bit thinner. And then I'll probably screw it up, and these will be thick as well. Just get your eraser up. Yeah. That is the good thing about uh, pinstraping. There is an eraser. It's called lacquer thinner. Do you have a uh, preference on colors you like to use personally, or do you – just kind of your own. I know we all uh, we have a whole gamut here, but yeah, I'm. If if you've ever seen my, uh, <laughs> hold on, I was trying to read a question and <laughs> stripe. You always want to look at what you're doing too. Um, I do. I you know, I, if you've ever seen my hot rod, I'm huge green guy, so I love green, and mm -hmm. that's my usually my favorite color to stripe with. But I I like all of them. It's it's all of them are fun to do. Uh, will the oil give some drying or dripping issues? Uh, not really. As long as you clean out the brush well enough, it, I've never had an issue with it. Um, depending what I'm doing, if I'm actually going to do a like a lettering job or like a striping job that I actually want to um, make look more, you know, an older style one where it's actually a um, I'm trying to think of the word. Uh, patina, like a patina paint job, I'll put it, I'll actually put oil in my brush. So it'll actually leave spots where later on when I go in the patina, it, it comes off easier and it will okay. actually go easier. So again, what size brush are you using here? So... I actually don't even remember. I think this is a zero. Or no, this is a double zero. Okay. Double zero Mac. You can get it at like any of your hobby stores or um, art supply stores. I think Hobby Lobby has it, somebody like that. See, then you can see here I'm getting into the more uh, 
abstract style striping. Another question. Uh, yeah. Do you have to prep the surface before starting? And what does that look like? Uh, depends. It depends on what you're doing. So if it's like a finished car, you want to use wax and grease remover mm -hmm. or like a surface wash. That way you get all the wax and everything off. So the paint will actually stick. Um, if it's like a, you know, just an old school hot rod that's all patinaed and, you know, there's no uh, shine to it really. That you just want, you know, I use Windex, make sure it's cleaned off and kind of go from there. Um, but yeah, you want to definitely make sure you have a clean surface to start with. That way you can, um, the paint will adhere. Any tips on how much pressure to put on the brush? So with pressure and stuff, the, the harder you push, the thicker the line. Um, so, I mean, like this line is actually a little thicker, so I was actually pushing a little harder, mm -hmm. but then the thinner or the lighter you put on it, put the brush on, the lighter the line will be. And as you can see, I'm going over some of these just because there's a couple spots here that weren't, you know, the thickness wasn't the same. It kind of waved a little bit. Uh, another question for a beginner, what would you suggest for beginner brushes? Would I go back to that kit? That I saying? would honestly, for lettering and stuff, I would go back to the, uh, Kafka's, the, uh, the Kafka lettering kit. Um, for brushes, I would either use the, uh, Kafka sword brush or the, mac i've always used the mac just because that's what i started with there's two different kinds there's there's a wrap on here you can't really tell on this one because this has been used so much um it's blue but there's two different ones there's blue and green the green ones are more of like a touch-up brush like a for scratches and stuff on your regular car the blue is more for the pinstripers So really then the, the, the thickness of the line is a function of the pressure and, and the brush size. Exactly, yeah. I, mean, I, I always tend to, I was looking more at the brush size of things and I'm trying to think to myself, I'm doing this, I know I'm going to push down way too hard on this. It's going to get sloppy. That's yeah, just, you know. yeah. Well, with, the, with these, it's, I mean, there's kind of one way to really use yeah, it. You know what I mean? Yeah. With the lettering brushes though, that's where it's handy to have, 10 different sizes because then you can make thicker lines or thinner lines. Like if I'm outlining this, I might use a number two brush and that'll determine how wide they are and stuff too. And in case you haven't been able to tell, I can tell, but the more I, the more lines I pull, the smoother they're getting, the better they're getting. Because I, you know, even though I, not gonna lie, I practiced last night. Um, oh, yeah. I know. Sorry, guys. You're prepared like that. I know, right? Um, no, I can definitely tell. I mean, I got to get the jitters out. Yeah, it's exactly. Not even that, but I mean, I'm sure you probably not. No, I was on a camera before. So. Yeah, or maybe you have. I don't know. I don't know if I have or not. I but I know like doing it at car shows, you have no. Even if you're like an amateur, like first time ever pinstriping, you're gonna have people all over watching it because it's it is awesome to watch. Like there's I'm on Instagram. And there's some guy and Facebook, but there's there's guys on there that you know even to this day I'll watch and be like, oh my. God, how did that guy do that, you know? And they're that good. Yeah, you'll see those guys at, at shows. 
uh, you know, like at the SEMA show, you know, yeah. they, that's what they do all day. And there's a huge crowd congregated, you know, I don't, can't get past them. You're like, what's going on? And yep. lo and behold, they're just mesmerized by it. Well, I think we actually had somebody at our booth this year, didn't we? Von Hot Rod? I think so. I, at the indoor shows? So or last know. year. Sorry. I don't know that we did, but there is a, a guy. He is out there. I see yeah. him all the time. And, you know, he's, people are giving him phone cases and, you know, personal items. And he'll just like, yeah. do a quick pinstripe for him. And uh, really, really kind of fun to watch if you, had, if you had the time when you're out there. Yeah. My, my favorite is, I think his Instagram name is like Paint Herfer or something like that. But uh, the dude is, he paints signs and stuff and like massive signs. A lot of them for barbershop, like old school barbershops and stuff. And the guy, I will literally sit there and watch 20 to 30 minutes of just him painting signs because he's that good. And no, I'm not trying to suck up the, the <laughs> guy. He just really is that good. Or like, I'm, he doesn't do it very much, but Max Grundy, if you ever get the chance to watch him, do some paint work and stuff. He's really talented as well. So do you have certain um, patterns that are sort of go-tos for you, or is it different each time? It's usually different each time. Like these are just kind of yeah. doing. Oh, sorry about that. Sign. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I started that sign like five years ago. Uh, the teardrop is always a good go-to just mm -hmm. because it's, it's cool looking and a lot of people like it. So that's usually a good go-to. And what you do is you start with one line and then kind of go from there. Then you just keep working off of that one line. As you saw, I did two lines because I screwed one up, but. Yeah, well, you know how it is like in school on your notebook, you know, yeah. you start doodling and next thing you know, you're. That's kind of how I picture it. Yeah, know? six pages and <laughs> the desk. Pages. The desk later. And one F later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, honestly, it's it's a lot of fun, and it just takes a lot of practice to get, you know, to where even where I'm at. Like, I wouldn't consider myself a professional. I would consider myself a pretty decent amateur. But I mean, to get to that professional level, like Von Dutch or jeffries or those guys it's insane i mean it, there's so much work that goes into that and you literally have to practice every day i do this maybe once a month when i you know get a wild hair or something i'll yeah. decide to do it but i mean to get really really good at it you have to be doing it every day anything. Yep. yeah you have to do it all the time i'm sure but so you mentioned some of the paints. One shot is what we carry here. Um, we actually carry House of Color. Two, yeah, we carry House of Color too. I forgot about them. Yeah. Uh, and it, you know, I like both. I just started out using one shot. Um, so I, I don't know. I guess I'm brand loyal, or okay. I know it. I know it, so I use it. One of those type of things. Is there any differences in, and maybe you've probably tried the different, is there any differences? I have. I actually tried one can of House of Color, and it's all, it's really good. It works really well, but it's it's a little runnier. Like this stuff, you'll see me, I keep dipping my brush in the uh, lacquer thinner. Mm -hmm. It's to thin it out a little bit, so I can pull a longer line or, a, you know, it's not as much one shot on it, not as much paint on the brush. And so I can use all my paint that I got out the first time. So you've thinned that out a few times. How many, how many times have you actually dipped into the paint for this? Once. So don't go overboard. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, you can waste a lot of paint, but because yeah. this stuff, I remember in kindergarten, my teacher always used to say, dabble, do you? This stuff is the epitome of a dabble, do you? That might be an Ohio thing. I don't know. A little dabble, do you? Yep. It's because I used to put a half a bottle of glue on my stuff. <laughs> Could explain why I like pinstriping. Peeling off your fingers. Yep. Thanks, Dave. Now I want to go play with some glue. Hey. 
What's the largest surface thing that you've pinstriped? Uh, Is it a sign or? I've done some pretty big signs, but actual full pinstriping, the by far the biggest thing I ever did. So, I know you guys probably haven't seen it, but on YouTube, I, I believe it's YouTube, we have the Powered by Enthusiast mm -hmm. uh, videos, and yours truly was featured on that as well with my 54 Chrysler. It's a big old green four door with a Hemi in it. And, you know, it's, it's a blast to drive. But before it got to its, the version it's at right now, uh, it used to be patinaed and had wide whites and red wheels and stuff on it. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to sit out here and pinstripe some of the trunk. So, you know, I do a pinstripe like this big. And I'm thinking, Oh my God, that's huge. I can't believe that is going to be so big on the trunk. I step back a few feet and it, the trunk's like this big and I have a pinstriping this big. So I eventually got it to where the bottom of it was this wide and it went all the almost all the way up the trunk lid to the back package tray and stuff. It looked really, really cool, but man, it took me forever to do <laughs> I got myself. Yeah. And every time I'd stand back and look at it, I'm like, God, I didn't get anywhere. But it's fun. It, you know, it, it's it's that kind of stuff where if you're bored at home, especially now during quarantine and stuff, yeah. it's it's something to teach yourself. And, you know, if you get good enough, you can make some money doing it, too. Is there a type of material or a object even that you would recommend for a first first timer? Yeah. So I that's a good question. I should have said that. <laughs> um what I would use if you can, if you got it laying around or go to a junkyard or a hardware store, get a piece of glass. It's okay. the best thing to use to practice on. Um, it's what I used to practice on because it doesn't stick. It doesn't stay on. It'll actually, you can take a razor blade, wipe it right off. You can take thinner, wipe it right off. Um, and you can keep doing it, you know, a million times and never hurt it. So that's, that's by far the best thing to practice on. And it it gives you the um, feeling of actually actual paint and everything too. So okay. That's good. Uh, good to know. If you're you're uh wanting yes. to jump into this and give it a shot. Yeah. Start there. And, and just so you know, we sell glass for like 69 Camaros and stuff. You can get like a you can get one of those to practice on. Yeah. Um, we actually sell the remover too. We were talking yeah, about that yeah. earlier as well, but we yes. do, I believe we do sell that. Uh, yeah. Strip it back off. But, uh, yeah. Or if you're a kid and your dad's got some random hot rod mm -hmm. sitting out in the backyard. Just out there yeah. Tell him. yeah, just go out and start striping it. And he'll either come out and be like, wow, that looks great. Or yeah. what were you doing? Imagine his surprise. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that from personal experience or anything, but we may have a Model A pickup truck with the entire door lettered. So. It looked cool though. See, as you can see, I was actually done with this. <laughs> and then yeah, I, as we were talking, I found a spot I can put more uh, paint. But this is the cool thing too. This is why I do the pinky. And a lot of guys do the pinky. So there's no paint here. You don't get fingerprints on it. So if you go back a lot and see quote unquote finished products and say to yourself, eh, I might go back and touch that up a little bit. Yes. So I, <laughs> a, some of these things just ongoing projects yes. that you actually say are finished. Yeah. Right? So it's actually funny you say that because I actually do hand drawing and stuff too. I draw a lot of, you know, renderings and stuff for cars and uh, just murals and stuff like that. And I swear, I'll be like, this is done. This looks awesome. You know, can't get any better. I'll be walking down the hallway or walking past it. And I'll be like, Oh, that needs that. Grab a pencil or grab a pen and go in and do it. And that, there's stuff that I've had done for maybe 10 years that I'll look at and be like, Oh, I could add that to it. Okay. Let's do that. And go back and do I'll it. go back and add okay. it. Yeah. So how quickly does the paint dry? We had a viewer question here. Yeah. So with one shot, it actually takes a little bit of time to okay. dry. So, um, 
like this, I'm actually going to add red striping to the, you know, in here, just in this area right here and this side right here. But which I might, we might get to if I get a minute. Um, but uh, I usually let it sit overnight. You can give it a cut like an hour or so, maybe, maybe an hour before you can actually start putting okay. paint over top of it. So gotcha. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, no, but I mean, it does take a little patience. Yeah, and that's just, I mean, that's yeah. just what I've learned yeah. through the years. And by no means am I the, you know, end all be all expert on pinstriping. I, I'm just telling you how it works best for me, how I do it. You might pick up a brush and find a different way and be like, yeah, that guy had no idea what he was talking about, which could be true. You know, I just know how I do it. So that's how I'm showing you. Um, you can look at Grundy or Von Hot Rod or the Herfer guy, and there's, you know, all, all four of us would do it differently. So it's yeah. kind of, you know, it's all in your technique that you pick up that's easiest for you and most comfortable for you. Gotcha. So you're talking, you may add some red later on. Yes. If we got enough time, I might do it. Well, um, we can even post it later too. Oh, I'd yeah. Like to yeah, yeah. Finish. Yeah. yeah I, and so just so you know, I'm going to do that. And then I'll, what I'll do here, <laughs> I'll do a quick, um, just a quick, easy, what you see on a lot of hot rod headlights. It's just a quick, you know, couple lines, symmetrical. It looks really nice. A symmetrical, if you don't know what that means, I'm sure you guys know what that means. But if you don't, it just means even on both sides yeah. and that kind of stuff. So and, are you a fan of symmetrical or just depends? Either right? or. Symmetrical is yeah. a lot harder <laughs> yeah. because with symmetrical, you have it has to be symmetrical. Match, yeah. yeah. Um, with you know the abstract stuff, it's a lot easier because I you just do lines mm -hmm. like this, yeah. you know, that are nothing matches. It looks cool. Right. Is there tips for? Symmetrical. I mean, yes. you know, we talked about using the guide of the button on, on that. Yep, exactly. So we will start with our Model A headlight. So luckily, on round surfaces like this, especially these, they actually have the Ford logo right here. So that's your set. It's in the top dead center of the headlight. So that's going to be your center point. Okay. So I'll mark a... Just a line right there that looks about center and then kind of follow it back. This is where the grease pencil comes in. Yep, this is where the grease pencil comes in. So now I have my center point. And then I'll go off to the sides. In case you hear it rattling, it's because this isn't exactly the nicest model I had like ever. Uh, also, hey, Dad, I stole your model I had like. Yeah, yeah. Come bust in here. I know he's got a badge. He can get in here too. <laughs> so I marked my center point here, and then I marked my two end points. So now I'll just kind of put it back, look at the center line, look at them with my fingers on them. Looks about symmetrical. So you can also, I mean, a lot of guys you can measure it, you can do all that kind of stuff, but. Again, I don't I don't like doing it that way because it I like kind of working off of what I'm feeling for it rather than um, having a predetermined design. All right, so now we will use some blue. I'm just gonna clean the brush quick. Get more paint on myself. So while we're starting on this one, back on the helmet, is yeah. there any, we talk about drying, is it just, you just let it go, or is there yeah. any, anything you can do on that to accelerate it? Or, not really. I, I mean, an hour is not. I mean, it's, it's not bad, no. And I believe, you can, like, I could, honestly, I could pick up red and do it right now, but if you, when you cross lines, so yeah. say you go across these lines right here with red, it's going to actually uh it sticks a little bit there yeah. and it oh, doesn't yeah. give you that nice crisp right. clean yeah. line yeah you definitely want after all that work <laughs> yeah give it give it the necessary time exactly good it wasn't anything important just bottle cap all right so let's do some blue so this is how you open it <laughs> Don't tell the guys, by the way. I still want our screwdrivers out of there. 
So the screwdriver with paint on it, it was it was not me. It was Dave. Not <laughs> yeah, anything. Dave said I could use it, guys. So just cleaned out my brush. You know, got a nice and thinnery. The good thing about that important thing when you do this though is to make sure you use a brush or a rag and actually dry it out because if not, it'll get it stores thinner in it because it'll store thinner in it actually better than paint because thinner is thinner. Right. So pun intended. Um, so it'll actually store it in there better and it'll get in the paint and it'll kind of, you can watch the paint spread out as you're putting it on. Whoops, Daisy. <laughs> Yeah, I don't worry about told you I'm gonna get paint everywhere I'm used to doing this in my garage at home and it's it's I have paint everywhere is there a you know obviously we're climate control here but yes. if you're doing this in your garage it's obviously temperature considerations maybe <laughs> so the coolest thing about one shot is you can literally I mean, I've actually had it freeze before. I have had it freeze before, which was really weird. Um, it just doesn't spread, you know, at all. It It's really hard to work with. Mm -hmm. If it's hotter, it's going to be runnier. But, you know, usually if you're comfortable, the paint's going to be comfortable. Yeah. It goes with any, uh, any step of the way, I would imagine. Exactly. So, loading my brush. Oh, the other thing I meant to tell you guys is on the brush. See how it's got a rounded edge and a flat edge? Can you see that? So when when you're when you're striping, I put my how do I do it? <laughs> I usually God. You never really thought about I know, I know. That that's the worst thing. Like where I, I'm telling <laughs> it's you guys such a natural motion, Yeah, right? yeah. So I put my thumb on the flat part and then I'll go cuz that way you can roll it when you're doing curves, you actually want to roll the brush if I can do it because that way it doesn't get thinner and thicker when you're, I can't do the curve right now to save my life. It doesn't get thinner and thicker line when you're doing curves with it. Yeah, it looks good though. <laughs> so yeah, but that's usually how I hold it. That's why it's got that little thing there. The, I use the little nub, the fatter part, as kind of a, you know, guide to roll it. I'm trying to load this thing up so I, to where I like it. Ooh, there we go. That's just a, a feel thing, knowing how much. Yeah, you pretty much. I mean, it's kind of figured out after you've done it a few times. Yeah, how it applies. Pretty much. So. I'm gonna start. All right, I'm bagging off the table. This one I actually want to look good, so. Any, uh, just all of a sudden got really silent. Uh, yeah. I, I'm like, I, I don't want to like jump in and make you, you know. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. You're, you're definitely all right. You want another, another viewer question is about you know, do you coat with clear after the fact? You can actually. The bad that is the one bad thing about one shot. It has a tendency to kind of shrink up and lift if you if you don't give it enough dry time. I mean, it has to be dry, dry. Like there's, I did, just did a sign for a guy for his, uh, he's actually got a 63 split window gasser. Mm -hmm. And I just did a sign board and stuff for him for car shows. And uh, I told him, I was like, you're going to want to wait like a month or two <laughs> before you actually clear this thing because if not, it'll it'll actually lift. I, I honestly, hmm. I've been doing this for years, and I still don't. 
it's a, it's a toss up. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the ones I see the pinstriping that shows is not. It seems. Yeah, and that's the, that's why a lot of guys use um, one shot because mm -hmm. you don't have to clear it. It's got UV protection in it. So if you watched our other videos, you'll know what UV protection is. But just in case you didn't, UV protection actually blocks it or doesn't block it, but pr helps protect it from the rays of the sun. So it's it doesn't, you know, the color doesn't fade or anything like that. So here's a perfect example. So as you can see, I, on this guy, see how those lines are off? Well, kind of hard to see with the light, but the lines are kind of off. So that's what's cool about this. You can fix it. So again, happy accidents. <laughs> so what I'll do is make this line needs to be a little thicker. Fill this guy in a little bit. Now this is obviously, again, things you figured out through your experience. Yes. Are there typical uh, happy accidents, as you say, that you you come across during doing this that you you can you provide tips on fixing? You know, if somebody like yeah, you know, obviously you're thickening up the lines here. Um, yeah. Like it out, or is it's that, it's just preference and ingenuity yeah. <laughs> honestly i call them happy accidents but yeah. they're actually oh whoops they're <laughs> you know oh whoops moments yeah. um but yeah it's it's one of those things where that's a good thing you can do whatever you want to it so yeah. when if I, I will give you one tip though if you're ever doing it for a customer on their car don't say oh whoops because that does not end well for anybody but <laughs> That seems like very good advice. Yeah, it is. I would imagine you don't have them looking over your shoulder while you're doing it. Yeah, exactly. When you're doing like a $100,000 car or something at a car show, yeah. don't say, oh, whoops. Um, but no, it's, you know, a lot of, actually, a lot of the times, some of my best striping comes from, oh, that probably shouldn't have looked like that, you know, and it, yeah. it turns out really, really well. So my blue is actually a little thicker, so I'm getting some more on here. And you're not tattooing here, so that's good too. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely don't want to hear oh whoops on that. Yeah, your your saving grace <laughs> yeah. is again thinner. Yeah. You know, it'll wipe off. So that's a plus for sure. What's the most unique uh, material type? Uh, I know we're going to be doing this creeper, which is softer. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun though. Yeah, you, know, you talked about glass for you know starting out. Any uh, any materials that you would stray away from pinstriping? Yeah, actually, you know what really is difficult to do is paper. Paper is difficult to do because it's paper and it actually like remember how i was telling you about the book so it actually absorbs the paint and it's it's a lot harder to pull a nice clean straight line or you know bumpy type surfaces if the easier it's easier if it's smooth nice smooth surfaces This probably isn't the ideal work area for you. Oh, that's not bad. It's not. Uh, no, it's fine. Any uh, I'm used to sitting in setting my... up on, now for not on a car where you're you're doing some small like this, just space. I <laughs> no, nothing that you can bump into. To... Yeah, honestly, I use in my garage. I got a. I know a couple of people that are watching that I saw pop up can attest to it. I have a big green '70s like 
living room chair that was out of my grandma's house. And I use that. And uh, I call it my thinking chair, which actually is my napping chair. Um, but yeah, I use it in a footstool. I just put the stuff on a footstool or, you know, whatever happens to be in front of me. And I just go to town. I like that, that color pops and uh, good old process design. blue, man. Then again, if we have time, I'll show you the other color on it too, or we'll post it up later. So I am going to show you one really cool trick. The, this took me forever to learn because I was always like, God, how did, if, you, if you've seen pinstriping, you'll see the guys that have like, really cool dots on their stuff and they're thicker and then progressively get thinner and mm -hmm. thinner. And I could never figure out how they were doing it until one day I accidentally got paint on my brush and dropped it. And I was like, Oh, that's a perfect circle. So yeah. the tip of the striping brush, ah, just get some paint on it. Like so. That's cool. So is that your thing or is that actually? No, it, they... it, I I don't actually know. I think people do it. If not, I'm just that talented. And you guys <laughs> you guys can use that. It's you're not patented gonna, yet. Pat, you're gonna patent it. Yeah. See how hard is it to not I mean now it's easy for you, but to not go over with your hand. I'm a lefty. Oh, God, I do it right. all the time. So left-handed especially. Yeah, you're smearing, going over it. Are you still, that's still a thing? Oh, yeah. That that never <laughs> not becomes a thing. Yeah, I can imagine that being a huge issue for me. Yeah, you'll hear me in the yeah. garage and all of a sudden I'll be, son of a, <laughs> get the lacquer thinner out yeah. and have to, you know, fix some stuff. But, but, yeah, I mean, it's not bad. And that's, again, why I showed you guys the, the pinky trick yeah. because it actually stops you from getting your hand in the paint. Okay. Yeah, cool, right? It is. Hold on a second. I'll show you. That's <laughs> yeah. As I wipe across <laughs> it. So there you go. You can see the dots we put on. It's symmetrical. Yeah. Does it actually look symmetrical? Yeah. <laughs> it's not okay. a happy accident. That, but also, when you get stuff symmetrical, that is also yeah, a happy accident. Yeah. Long. So the other thing is too, you know, drawing it out. I like that because you can make it perfect, and it looks absolutely perfect, pretty much. Yeah. You know, both sides. But you know, that's not what. In my view, that's not what people pay for pinstriping for. That's not why you get into pinstriping. You, it's that hand-done, non-mechanical, non-machine-like feel. You can tell. Feel. Yeah, yeah you can. Yeah. yeah, if there's an, if there's a, you know, one line is different than the other, yep, it was hand-done, you know? And I like that in cars. And a lot of the real big-name guys that build cars and stuff, they'll actually tape out pinstripes and, and then paint over them and stuff. And yeah, it looks awesome. It looks perfect, but it's not doesn't have that coolness yeah. factor of the old school hand pinstriping. But yep. then again, it's hard to find somebody that can I, I've met a couple guys that can actually pinstripe perfect. I mean, they are hmm. ridiculously good. Yeah, I think there's a lot to be said for what you just said, knowing that it wasn't <laughs> exactly created. Well, why don't we uh yeah i'm gonna get on that let's thing let's bring this thing up here i'm gonna move some stuff back here all right and, uh, we'll put the creeper up on here and again you guys will be able to like or comment on this post for to win the what's gonna be a custom summit race yeah paper. this should be pretty cool and it's yeah. not a help so and i'll sign it so if i ever get famous it'll be signed by mcfly and that's what i go by when i'm striped i actually sign have it too it's yeah, Dave will, Dave will just be like, Dave. That's right. So this is actually what we're going to be striping and giving away. So 
This could actually be entertaining because it's actually on wheels. <laughs> oh boy. Um, oh, this could be entertaining. I'll hold the place over here if you want. Um, that's all right. I've, I've worked on harder things. Um, but yeah, this should be pretty cool. It's actually a really nice creeper. I got one of these at home. It's got, you know, nice vinyl on it and stuff. Um, oh yeah. Oh, we got some, there we go. Patrick coming in for the save. Where do you want to place these? Put them right underneath the middle. Of the... You want it propped up a little bit? Yep. That'll work perfect. Oh, your hand wasn't under there, was it? <laughs> Dave isn't going to be able to pinstripe today because I just broke his hand. I'm a lefty. I put a right hand. No, oh, perfect. You might know I'm smearing. <laughs> My dad's actually a lefty, and he can he can strike pretty well. Well, he used to. He's not as good as me anymore. Uh -oh. Sounds like a throwdown. It is. He's going to come in. He, he, I'm telling you, he's going to bust through the door. He's going to hear me mentioning him. It seems to happen when you have kid when you're a kid and your dad. Anytime you mention them, they they're like yeah, right around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, I wasn't talking about you, Dad. I think we gotta lock on that door. So. Thank God. Oh, uh, his badge may work. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's been here long enough. Yeah. So yeah, my dad. You guys know my dad works here too. Oh, how would you do? So we got another question. How would you do a line or two down a whole car? So. This is something I didn't really get into because I don't have anything long enough to do it with. Well, this kind of would have been. But you just use tape. So you put uh, – well, there's a lot of different ways to get into it too where you can do it, tricks and tips. But if I was going to do it, um, I would take a piece of tape, like a long, you know, what is three-quarter inch tape mm -hmm. or half-inch tape, run it all the way down the car, and then use that as my guide. So I would put the – um okay so say this is the tape i would put my pinky here and then that way i can run it along or my pinky up right up against the tape so i can run it along and then as you're running it along you get that same thickness all the way down and you can have it you know a nice line or what you can do is you can put one side of your brush right on the tape and then pull your line and then take the tape off and you have a perfect edge on this side, perfect edge on this side. That's a pretty easy way yeah. to do it, honestly. So I'll kind of show you on this too. So here I've got, you know, my chalk mark or my grease marks again, just kind of the centers of it. So I can see kind of where it's at. Looks like you did some homework before I got here. I did. I told you, man, I'm prepared ish. I striped one whole thing last night. <laughs> nice. I know. I'm, I'm prepared for this and everything. So going with the red, that that's a obviously one of the more popular colors you use. Though. Yeah, reds. Okay. I mean, you know, they call it resale red because oh, everybody yeah. likes red. The black, I think it pops nicely. Yeah. I would imagine it's one of our better sellers of this of yeah Ooh, this is gonna feel good <laughs> all right so this is the way you can also do long lines so this is kind of going to show you how to do it so i'll put my this is not going to work well hold on hold anything in place uh, here no no we should be good do you have another one of these any chance oh yeah let me get another one of those so you got it, dave Dave's got it. We're good. This thing's just kind of a little wiggly here. There we go. We got it. Had to do some sleuthing. <laughs> We're somewhat prepared for this, guys. I'm telling you. I'm just going to throw it on there. Oh, that'll work. That'll work. All right. Thank you, sir. So when I'm doing it, I'll put kind of my hand here to, as a guide because this is straight. So I'll find a straight point on this, which is obviously the straight metal bar. And then I'll put my hand there 
pinky down and kind of hold my hand with my wrist or my wrist with my hand. And hopefully there are bolts in the way that are making me clear, clear I think. Yeah. And that squeaking noise, that is the vinyl in my finger. Nothing else. So like your joints. Yeah. So how does this material factor into the drying? Uh, it actually will dry about the same. Well, So when I so say I'm doing a long line too, and I I pick my brush up like I just did, I'll actually go back over it a little bit when I'm going to do it. So I'll start like here. That way you can get the same line thickness, and it doesn't look like you actually picked up your brush. As you can see, I'm shaking a little bit, but I'm just kind of working it in, making it look correct-ish. Yeah, it's like you say, these are, it's all about the look of the, the hand drawing. Exactly. Eh, it looks all right. <laughs> Yeah, looks pretty straight for doing it by hand, I guess. Here, sh shoot. Can you, uh, here, shoot down it so you can kind of see it. You can kind of see it goes a little wide, but it looks better in person. I think it's, I think it's Patrick's camera. We're going to blame it on Patrick's camera. <laughs> yeah, it's way to the width. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a fisheye camera, I guess. We'll go with that. So really, how long have you been doing this? Now you mentioned um, you know, your start. You don't have to give away your age, but I'm just no, I'm curious. Uh, I don't actually know. It feels weird saying 20 years, but uh, no, it hasn't been 20. I started my junior year of college, so that was seven. Oh, 13 years. 13 years, is that right? 13. Yeah, I'm bad at math, too. Yeah. I was an art major in college, guys. See? Then you stick your finger in it and get it all messy. So that's my own signature. I'll put my fing fingerprint in it for you. So how does your art background help you with this as far as either vision for it or just application in general. I mean, it's uh, really, it really comes down to this is such a unique art form. I would imagine it, it's just experience. It really right. is. They don't even really teach anything like this yeah. in college. Um, my one professor was really into it, which was kind of cool because if I had any questions during college, I could ask him and he would kind of help me out. Um, but, you know, it the art background helps a lot with uh, – this is going to sound cheesy, but color theory. So okay. like, yeah. you know, figuring out what colors go well together, what's visually pleasing and like negative space and stuff. Cause too much pinstriping, it sometimes can be too much pinstriping. Right. Um, stop. Yeah. Whereas this thing, it's going to be, we're going to have too much pinstriping on this. <laughs> no, we'll have just the right amount. Well, we got steadier. Yeah, <laughs> as, as, you, as you go. As I 
any tips for making like this, this connections like you're doing right now on the lines? Or is it just a matter of getting that point down? It's a matter of getting the point down. So usually, oh, well, hold on, I'll pull one. Um, so when you, as you're finishing up your line, as you're coming to the end of it, what you want to do is you want to actually pull up on the brush. So you're, you know, so it goes from fat to mm -hmm. thin, kind of like the brush goes. Okay. So can you see that? It gives you a nice sharp ending to it. Yeah. So it gives you that nice sharp ed edge. And then you just start there again and connect them. And there's guys that do thousand times different striping than me like they'll do the real swoopy swirly mm -hmm. stuff and you know i love that stuff but i i don't know if i can't do it or i just i don't know i don't know i i just have never really gotten into it to the point where i tried it really yeah so i like like the more old school you know 50 style thick bold lines Oh, I get a cool idea for down here. See, there you go. Yeah. Going as you going as you go. Coming up as you go. You mentioned some of those different uh you know, the swoopy lines versus the more old school. I think I'd asked on the outset about the different trends in this, but is there something that you see is more popular nowadays or is it just timeless old school pinstripe? That's I mean, all of it's, all of it is still pretty interesting. Yeah. So you got um, old school style stuff is always popular just because it's old school style stuff. It's like flames, you know, it, the newer style flames look cool, but they're, you know, they'll date something. And it's kind of the same way. Like I think of the swoopy stuff as more of like 70s style yeah. pinstriping, whereas this is more earlier. old school, yeah. earlier style. So if you watch this, you'll actually see me spin my brush some. No, oh, look at that. I can actually do it now, too. It's a good news day. I know, right? I spoke too soon. So you can see how the brush actually gets twisted up. Yep. But then you can see how you can barely tell, you know, that that's a separate line. Can you tell what I'm doing here yet? No. You'll be able to after this one. <laughs> Yep. You mentioned a little bit of the lettering before. Some of the work you do on that. Mm -hmm. What other types of stuff have you done freehand? I know, you, like you say, you've got your own. You got a lot. I know you got a lot going on at the at the home shop. So yeah, I'm sure you get probably requests and um, you know you mentioned numbering and lettering. Yeah, so I do trucks type stuff. Do you, that kind of stuff. I do a lot of. Uh, I do a lot of signboards more than automobile, like more than lettering cars, because I like doing that better. It's a little bit easier. Again, I can sit in front of the TV and <laughs> do it, yeah. so I can watch. You know, wa hopefully watch the Browns win again while I'm doing it. Oh, man. Sorry, got to get a got to get a throw <laughs> in the 
the brownies. Well, we picked the right week to do this. Yeah, right? no kidding. Good thing we didn't do it last week, right? Ugh. Too soon. Yeah, fourth and 41 is not a happy memory. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do that kind of stuff. I, uh, I, my high school, when I was, you know, after college, I actually did, I played football in high school and college. So I went back and coached and uh, while I was coaching, I actually lettered our entire like school history football record on the door of the coach's office and to the locker room. And that, I mean, that was pretty, that was pretty cool. I thought. So I notice on, on the flames, you're, it's not a long continuous line. You're, you're meeting at certain points. Is that a, is that a feel thing as well? Like right here? Yes. Yeah. You're not kind of just falling all the way around. Yeah. So when it comes to flames and doing circles and, curves, and stuff, yeah, yeah. it's impossible. Like it's, it's, well, it's not, I take that back. It's not impossible, but with my, fat hands. Well, and I, I feel stuff. like that's, a, that's an area where I would make a mistake. It, you know, I try to go and then I would end up, my hand would go. Over it. That's yeah. Right. And, and that's really what it is. You go, if you, I've gotten used to it enough to where I know where I got to stop yeah. or I'm going to screw it up. So that's kind of where that comes in. You'll get a feel for it. The more you do it, mm -hmm. um, then you'll kind of get it. Like you said, you've done like dashboards and, and interior. Yep, dashboard. I mean, I've literally yeah. What's uh, done everything? Is there anyone that you you've done that you started into and said, "Yeah, I wish I wouldn't have started into this <laughs> um, particular area or or surface," uh, or just because you're so open to you know having little mistakes that you can correct, you're you're fine with it. Yeah, I mean, there's. There's a bunch of stuff that I've started that I'm like, God, I wish yeah. I wouldn't have started this. Yeah. Um, or, or like huge works that I, I'll do. I start and then it's like, man, this is daunting. Why did I ever decide to do this? Like out at our shop, we have a, a wash bay and it's got, you know, I forget what they are. They're the cinder, uh, parts washers or no, no, uh, cinder blocks. Oh, okay. So the way they are, they have like a full cinder block on one side and then half a cinder block and uh, like a uh, split in the middle. Mm -hmm. So I decided it'd be a great idea to paint the whole wall white and then do, you know, checkerboard, but do four little blocks red Jeez. with the inside white. And I, I swear it took me in, uh, it took me a full summer oh. to get it done. And it, <laughs> It was, yeah, it was bad. And my dad was like, well, you aren't going anywhere until you finish yeah, this. Yeah, you started it. So. Yeah, and we're not letting my shop look half finished. That's funny. That one I definitely wish I wouldn't have done. And then I was out there and we were cleaning and I actually, I found the red paint and I was like, hey, this could be used another coat. And I'm as I'm doing it, I'm like, what am I doing? I hated doing this the first time. Oh, so now. Perfections. Yeah, I know. Now it's needless to say I'm in the middle of painting that again. So Oh, you know what? Maybe I'll show some uh lettering on this. All right, let's do some lettering. Um, so I'll give you a little, another little tip here too, mm -hmm. if you want to look in the brush box. So this is what this brush should look like, right? See, nice, straight, really nice brush. However, if you leave them in your lacquer thinner can overnight, this is what happens to them. 
they get like a perma curve, which actually you can get out. It's yeah. it's not bad to get out. You just need to thin it and put them in oil and then put like a. I usually close them between two books and it usually straightens it right back out. So when you're cleaning the brushes when you're done, then you typically obviously don't leave it in there. Let yeah, it, do not leave it in the thinner can. Do you let it soak in there for a bit or you just swirl around and I, I'll usually swirl it around because if it's got um this one actually has paint in it. Um if it gets uh as long as you get some of the paint out or mo ninety percent of the paint out and put it in oil, it'll actually keep the paint uh wet. That's what the oil is for. I don't know what get on that one. All right, so hmm. Use some blue. So this is going to be an example of me lettering. Okay. When lettering, I don't use the this. I mean, you can. There's no nothing against that, but I like full color. So I, and you know, thicker color. So I will actually just use the can. You develop different styles for lettering, or do you have your own unique? Just kind of whatever I feel. Okay. I have a few different ones that are my go-to. Yeah, it's definitely, you can see some really unique creative things out there. Yeah, this one is just kind of off the top of my head, though. Let's see where you're going with this. That's right. You get pretty fine in there with the, I, I'd worry about those lines coming together but yeah you know, with the, the middle of the o and the d yeah it, it's it it can get kind of tricky where's, yeah. the, where's the apostrophe at? W -R -L -P it's, it's, apostrophe it's, it's, yeah, after the d yeah, I'm good for <laughs> sorry guys yeah I'm good for <laughs> also that's a really bad thing i'm sure you guys have seen some bad tattoos misspellings don't want to misspell anything on anybody's car either talked about some of the stuff you've got going on in your in your shop anything interesting that uh, i know you've seen a lot of different uh projects and ideas over the years anything interesting happening uh, in your world that you can talk about or are you keeping well i'm doing best? we got some pretty cool ones actually we got a uh i'm actually building a 32 ford can i Talk about that? I want to talk about that. Sure. I'm, I'm doing a uh, 32 Ford that I'm actually going to be driving for 365 straight days. And I actually live in 
Northeast Ohio. So where our, where we're based out of and, uh, or one of our bases and, uh, I'm going to drive it for a year straight to raise money for mental health awareness. And, uh, it's actually gonna be a 32 Vicky. So it should be pretty cool. When's the, uh, when's the kickoff day for that? I want to have it debut at, uh, good guys, Columbus next year, 2021. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try to forget about 2020. Yeah. No joke. <laughs> So you're driving 365 days a year. That's, yep. that's uh, some interesting challenges, well, especially it, where we live. Yeah, and it should be kind of cool too, because if it if it for some reason wouldn't make it, mm -hmm. like if I if I break down, I have 24 hours to fix it, or I have to start over again, which I don't want to do. Oh. Um, granted, it's not going to be that all that bad driving a 32 Vicky every day, um, but nonetheless, I mean, it's one of those things where. Uh, you know, you don't want to have to drive it every day if you don't have to. Uh, but yeah, it's, it should be pretty cool and interesting to see the process. Cause if it, you know, if it, uh, wouldn't go, if, it, if I would have to fix something on it, it'll be, I'm going to film it. I'm going to document every day and stuff. And it, it should be really a pretty cool experience. And it'll show that, you know, you can drive a hot rod every day, you know, yeah. as long as you build it right and, do yeah. the right stuff it'll, it'll last and i'm using a ton of our summit parts and stuff too so we can uh you know because our parts are our name brand stuff oh yeah i think it's, a lot of it's better than some of the name brand stuff um and it's you know summit branded parts and i love this stuff that's if i can if i have the chance to buy summit branded stuff i buy it i just uh -huh. I'm distracting you. You were. There you go. See that? That's how you fix it, kids. That's the accident. That's right. Fixed. Now the person that gets this will never know. Oh, wait, I'm filmed. <laughs> <laughs> All done in one take. Yeah. Now, what type of – it's a lettering brush. Are those all typically the same? Does it go through the 0 to 10 deal with that too? Or Yeah, that's what, that's what that kit comes in. Okay. It's 0 to 10. So, okay. And it's uh, – you know, I, I love them. So these things are great in my opinion. See that? There was a dot of blue there. <laughs> that I spilled on it. So now I'm going to do a little bit of blue work. You know, and you can use a striping brush for this too, but I got this one dirty already. So, <laughs> yep. And you can make crisper completions with it too. Like by completions, I mean that right there. stick with my crayons but some definite good tips for those starting the glass substrate and, yes for sure uh, yep yeah, just the uh, line following i mean the biggest thing for me like i said was you know not continuing the line too far and on the flames you're showing you stop the curve and you kind of meet it Yep. Tips like that. I would be, like I said, I'd be smearing paint all over the place. So. And that's really what it is, man. I mean, it's, it's just 
getting your knack, mm -hmm. getting your feel of it down. Because I can tell you what to do until I'm blue in the face, and you could go home and try it, and you would not be able to do a thing. Right. That's it. Like you said, practice. So. Yeah. We doing all right on time, too? Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. But we'll uh, turn this thing over and uh, let people see the finished product. And then, again, uh, like or comment on the the post for this video. And uh, we'll, I mean, we'll leave it out there through the weekend and draw a name randomly. And uh, you get yourself a nice pinstripe custom creeper here for your garage. Works for me. Work is a great wall hanger. And I'm not going to lie, the nicest comment about me, you know, you don't get any extra bonus points for that. But, I mean, if you want to make nice comments, <laughs> I'm just kidding. This will be a fair drawing. <laughs> this is one of those things, too. It, it's... To teach this is kind of hard because it's I've been doing it so long, it's kind of second nature to me, like how I move the brush and stuff. And the pressure, it's hard to explain kind of how that works, you know? Yeah, yeah, the way that factors in yeah. with the, the brush size and the pressure. The other thing, too, is just holding your, your – uh, left arm up the way you are too i mean that's uh it would take some getting used to just because i would want to like lay that right down there and then i'd have to like yeah i know giant eraser out and start all over again it, it it takes you know the best thing to do is if you've ever welded before they say it's impossible to find a comfortable welding spot you know but that's what it is you got to find a comfortable spot find a spot that you're comfortable with and kind of yep. go from there All right, now we need the striping brush. <laughs> also, striping brushes curve too when you put them in there. Let me clean these out so we don't forget about them. There you go. Yeah, so again, we carry all the paints, the brushes, brush kits. Uh, I know we had ordered up a few different kits for this yeah and uh you know these kind of a starter kit with the mixing and you mentioned it has a kind of booklet in there yeah and it's yeah. honestly for the price it's great and you can get i mean you can get this stuff i found that through us it one shot is actually cheapest through us yeah I, i've and i've you know before i worked here i've done research on it to see who's cheapest because i'm very cheap <laughs> and uh we actually honestly have it at the cheapest, the cheapest, if not like one of the cheapest prices around. So I think it's, you know, summerracing.com and then keyword pinstriping tools, I believe will get you. Yeah, you I think go. so. Yeah. Or yeah, or I think it, yeah, that gets yeah. You, that'll get you to the paints, the tools, everything that uh, you might need for that. Yep. If you want to give it a whirl or if you're, somebody that does this already yeah or if you type in carry is awesome it won't get you anywhere it's just really nice to type in get some carry combo kits put up there oh oh i like that idea i'll have to talk to private label about that <laughs> you've got it in yeah switch to a striping brush for this whereas yeah the other lines because they're shorter or yeah so when when you switch to a striping brush you can pull a lot longer line a lot straighter whereas with the shorter brushes the shorter bristles it doesn't get as long of a line to it As long or as straight of a line.
All right. What do you think? I think Love it. it. More? Yeah, you, now you went beyond where I thought you would put the flames and everything in this in the lettering. It's awesome. It's fantastic. Uh, flames, something you do a lot of with your pinstriping or no? Yeah, I do. Obviously, you've got some experience with it. Yeah, I don't do a ton, a ton, mm -hmm. but I do, you know, I do enough to where it, it still ends up being pretty fun, but... Sorry, guys, you might end up getting this and it could have six pints of one shot by the time I'm done. <laughs> so like I said, my blue is a little thicker. So I'm I thin it up quite a bit. This is another thing too. Sometimes you'll get stray hairs. See how we got that little little guy right there? And it can screw up a whole line. So pull it out. You're good to go. If you notice that without pulling a line on it, I yeah. like kind of examine between pulls. Yeah, I just kind of happen to it's I'm used to it. So I yeah. and you I you have to usually get pretty close. So it's right. So I uh, just happened to see it. A special thanks uh, for Patrick and, and Katie behind the cameras here. We're doing some different angles yeah, than normal for sure. on this. So we're, we're getting some work, uh, a little extra work out of them this week. So thanks, guys. Hmm. Then sometimes you pinstripe yourself into a corner and don't really know what to do. <laughs> so if you do what I think you would do there. Yeah, that's where my head was going to. So maybe I do have a future in this. That's right, man. You know what? I like it. All right, now we're done. All right. So, oh, you want me to show, hold them up for these guys? Yeah. Yep. Again, like or comment, and you'll have a shot to get the custom creeper for your garage, or like you said, perfect on the wall, yeah. shop wall, man cave wall, whatever. So, Carrie, this was awesome. Yeah. Thanks hey. for the time. No problem, was, guys. Uh, I appreciate it. Good pointers. Uh, everybody else, thanks for watching. Uh, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, thanks, guys. Take Thank it you. easy.